Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna talk about a little bit more of a special video. We're gonna do a reaction to a project management meeting inside of the movie Deepwater Horizon. The Deepwater Horizon is an oil rig run by British Petroleum which caused one of the largest ecological disasters in April 2010 in the Gulf of Mexico. 11 people died, 17 people were severely hurt and millions and millions of gallons of oil were spilled inside of the Gulf of Mexico. The cast of this movie is absolutely spectacular with John Malkovich who is one of the site managers Kurt Russell, who is one of the rig supervisors, and Mark Wahlberg, who is the chief electronic technician. To give some context about this meeting, a recent cement job done by a subcontractor, Halle Burton, was just done to be able to seal off the well from leaking water. But there were some rising concerns from the oil rig supervisor, Kurt Russell, who enters the meeting and wants to express his concerns. Let's dive right in. Wow, well, Don Madrin and Bob Kaluza. Welcome back, Mr. Jim. Oh, yeah. So, you got all 500 feet of cement poured, huh? Yep. That cement's the only thing between us and the blowout. And it's cured. Yes. Had enough time, huh? Takes time to do it right. I mean, that cement job is compromised and everything above it is too. Well, it's not compromised. Houston doesn't have a problem. So I assume Slumber J guys said the same. Cement bond log they ran said the same, yeah? We are confident in the integrity of our cement job. So it's clear that Kurt Russell is not really pleased with the way that the job was done. He thinks that when a negative pressure test would be run, the cement would fail. That's why he enters the management meeting to be able to see what they think and to actually make his point clear. But we not. Well, we're quite comfortable with the integrity of that cement, that's for true. <laughs> you guys, just like my granddad. Pardon. You see, my granddaddy, he, uh, he never even went to the dentist because he didn't want to know all what was wrong because then he'd have to deal with it. You don't want to know if that cement job on this well is shit because you're 43 days and $50 million over budget. You really? 43 days and $50 million over budget? That's a really strong argument to bring up against management because an oil rig most of the time works with a day cost. That day cost includes the rent of the platform, the cost of the operators, the energy usage, the water usage. So as soon that as a project goes into delay, that means that the budget should be able to cover all of the costs of the extra days. And this is not always the case, which brings a lot of pressure onto management. So it's a strong argument to bring up. You should include yourself in that, Mr. Jimmy. BP picked this spot to drill, Bob. Consequences, that's on you guys. Of course. I got to try to deal with those consequences, so yeah, I'm included. The point is, you sent the testing team home before they could do their job, maybe give y'all some news y'all didn't want to hear. What would it have cost you to run that test, 125 grand? Another very strong point. He is talking about the fact that another test should have been run on the integrity of the cement. It's true that about 100 to $125,000 is enough to be able to check the sealing of the cement. Now, what happened in reality is that Halliburton gave the results to BP and showed that the cement was actually faulty. Still, they continued the works. You're a $180 billion company and you're cheap. That's why we're a $186 billion company. We worry about those bills. I worry about my rig. My crew lives on it. You just rent it. Don, you and I both know we need some downtime for maintenance. Mike, how many of our machines need repair? Uh, 390, Mr. Jimmy. 309. Yes, sir. Almost 10% of all the machinery aboard. Name a few for me. Name a few for me is also a typical mistake to do inside of a management meeting. When you have maintenance problems, it's always important to prioritize, to take the time and the patience to go over them. But in reality, you want to find a fine line between keeping the, the rig running and on other sides, having the time for maintenance. So that's why it's important to just prioritize some of the problems that you can do some of the days instead of just naming them all in once because nobody will take note or nobody will act on them. A few? I would love to hear exactly what piece of mission critical equipment I'm down. Shit, where do I start? A driller chair, process station 18, BOP control pods, telephone system, pipe racket system, GPS antenna, direct TV system, wireless internet, iron roughneck, top drive rack bag system, auxiliary draw works control, salt water service pump, smoke alarms in the galley. The reason why you're sweating so hard is because the compressor with the AC on this deck are down too. Everything but the toilet, huh? 
No, no, you got problems there too, but I don't do shitters. That's engineering. Who are you? Mike Williams, Chief ET. I'm gonna tell you like I told your executives on the chopper ride in and how about the timing of that visit. We gonna properly secure this well for a production platform come in right after us and start pumping oil. Unfortunately, to do it properly takes time. 43 days. 44 days. Keep counting, Bob. 45 days. 46 days. Have a cookie, Bob. Uh so what the rig supervising is suggesting is he's saying that the cement job should be redone and this takes at least 43 to 46 days to be able to close the cement more properly add another layer make sure it dried out which is a long time and as you could see the project has already a delay of 43 days that would double their amount of project delay days we're not sure if that's inside of the budget but that must sting with management can't run a cement log I'll tell you what we're going to do now. We're going to run a negative pressure test before we do anything else. If you really think we need to. I really think we need one, Bob, and so should you. Especially since we got no idea whether this well is stable or not. Now here, the management takes a dangerous turn. Now it's becoming an ego and a pride thing. Both the rig supervisor as the management, it's quite clear that the cement might be faulty. Now he's using the negative pressure test to be able to pressure the management in making the right decision. But what's clear is that John Malkovich, the site manager, doesn't want to give in to the rig supervisor his arguments just because he knows that it's comfortable. Now in reality, it's very dangerous to run a negative pressure test when the cement is faulty. This is eventually what happened and what caused the rig to blow up. So this moment is very important inside of the meeting to avoid this at all times. You want to stay reasonable. You don't want have to have any ego or any pride to do with it. Hey, dial tone. Day's looking up. Mr. Anderson, it's Mr. Jimmy. We're going to run a negative pressure test, start tripping out 3,000 feet of pipe. Thank you. Point was made clear, but the problem is, is that there was not real a consent found in this meeting, um, which is reasonable because the rig supervisor had his concerns and nobody listened to him. And on the other hand, the project management was quite under pressure due to all of the delay days. In reality, it's very important to take the time to do the maintenance, to do the negative pressure tests. And when something is faulty, take the time to be able to save people's lives. That's the most important. So there you have it, a reaction video to one of my favorite movies, Deepwater Horizon. I think this meeting is very realistic and you can learn a lot of it to be able to apply it in reality. If you like this videos, please like and subscribe. And I'm doing a video of this every week. So let's stay tuned. See you.